Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I made this platter. Now the one we'll make today will be different, it will have a different image on it, but the techniques will be exactly the same. Welcome to Rocket Rose Art, my name is Jeff. This platter we're going to be making today isn't terribly complex and the focus is more on the image and how to prepare that image to make the decal for it. It's not really on the glasswork unfortunately, um, because that's really straightforward. All you've got to make there for it is a blank canvas of white. Now I'll get into the details shortly, but before I do that, um, please, if you've got comments and questions, put them down below and I'll try and answer them. If you like it, hit the like button and um, if you want to see more of my videos, subscribe and turn on your notifications. At the end of this video, I will be answering a couple of comments and questions that I've received in the last couple of weeks, I think it is. So hang around for that. Now I do have to thank you all for your support in the growth of this channel. And if you want to help a little bit more, you'll find a couple of links in the description below. I thought I'd just show you a couple of the plates I've made and try to explain my reasoning behind the images. Now with the images that you use, it's a good idea to have very good contrast, but it's not absolutely necessary. If you look at the plate on the bottom, the image isn't real bright, there's not a lot of contrast in the image, but my goal there was to bring the attention to the grass on the right hand side, not the cap. I wanted the cap to not quite disappear, but be secondary, almost as if it's just hiding. In the top right, the plate with the horse on, I was trying to make the horse's eye the focus, so that the first time you looked at the image, that's really where your eye was drawn. Um, I think it's sort of worked. And the one on the top left, which I think you'd say has a steampunk theme, the focus there was in two places, obviously on the young lady and on the right there, the clock and the gear mechanism. But the thing to take away from this is that while I will say that contrast is important, it's not absolutely necessary. It really does come down to you and what you're trying to achieve. The only thing I will say is you don't want a real busy image. In my opinion, in most cases, you want the viewer's eye to be drawn to a very particular part of the image. But again, that is really up to you as an artist to decide what you want to do. There's not a lot to talk about today about materials and equipment. As far as materials are concerned, it's just simply going to be clear on the bottom and opaque white on top. And you'll need the decal paper that we'll be printing on. Now you will need some software to edit the image or you will have to use one of the online image editing um, websites. And you will need a suitable laser printer for printing the decals. I'll tell you a little bit more about the type of laser printer you'll need a little later on. I'm not going to have a cutting section today, it's just simply too simple. Uh, we'll get straight on to uh, selecting your images, preparing the images and um, printing your decal. Oh, before we get into that, something I forgot to mention is that um, before you get any design in mind or you cut glass certainly, is to consider the size of the decal paper you're going to use. Now the, size, the paper that I use here is letter size, um, but where you are it could be A4 size. So you will need to design accordingly. It is possible to uh, print two images and stitch them together on a piece. And I've seen that done very successfully, but um, it is a, just makes it a little bit more difficult. Now the first thing I want to talk about is sourcing images. Obviously, if you've got your own images, that's fine. But if you've got a particular theme in mind and you're looking for suitable images, one of the best resources that I've found is a website called Pixabay. Now they have thousands of free images and they are totally free and free for commercial use, um, which I'll show you shortly when we go try and find one. Now the only thing you do need to keep in mind is that if you're going to use an image that contains a person in it, 
and that person can be identified, you will probably need a model release to use that image if you're using it commercially. If it's private, I doubt very much that would be a problem. I am not a copyright expert, so um, you may need to just check that with somebody. Typically, if I'm making something that I want to sell, I won't be using images of people. Um, I'll be using other images such as images of animals or just scenery, plants, that type of thing. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll take you to the Pixabay website and I'll give you an idea of just how I choose images. Now, this here is Pixabay, but before I show you how I would uh, go about selecting images, I just need to talk a little bit about um, sizes. I did say before that the decal paper comes in a letter size. Now, you will need to do a little bit of calculation to work out your image size that you will require as far as resolution. Now, the recommended resolution you'll need for an image to get a really good quality image is 300 dots per inch. The size I'll be making today is uh, 120 millimeters by 240 millimeters. Now, 120 millimeters by 240 millimeters converts into 4.7 inches by 9.4 inches. If we multiply those inches by 300 dots per inch, we end up with a resolution of 1410 by 2820. Now, that's our minimum res minimum, re minimum resolution that we'll need for our image. Now the ratio between those sides is 1 to 2. That's important and we need to remember that when we go selecting our images. Now when selecting our images, the very first thing we need to do is look for images obviously of the subject matter that we want and that have a good contrast between the feature part of the image and its background. Now looking at these images down the bottom here, on the right hand side we have a red and yellow flower with a background that is not suitable. There is pretty much no real contrast between the main component which is the flower and the background. If we move over to the left where the landscape is, that is too busy. I wouldn't use that image, I think it's just too busy and there is no main feature in the image. The one on the very left, that's too light. You're not going to get any contrast between any main feature. Even if you pick that, I think it's a, I don't know what it is. But anyway, I don't think that's suitable. So if we work down, this image with the flower could be, but it's got a light background. So when I turn that into black and white, I'm going to end up with a gray background there that's going to really flood out the image. The girl over here, is quite well defined but again I don't think it's going to work when I turn it to black and white because of that background and because of the light grass in the front here. Now if you look at this grey scale image over here of the man's face on a black background that's excellent. Now I've already selected a couple of images that are up here on these tabs. One is this one and you can see there's, the frog will really stand out against that background. The other one is this one here of the bird. Again, another good image. Even though it does have a very light background, I think we can work with that. And this one here, I'll just get rid of that, of the swan, I think would work well. So the first thing to do is let's take this one of the frog. Now if you look over the side here where the free download button is, you'll see a link to the Pixabay license, which you should read. And below that, it says free for commercial use and no attribution required. So let's download that. So I drop down the download and here's what you need to look for. These are all the resolutions you can download that in. And we need to have a resolution that is at least that minimum I talked about before, which was 1410 by 2820. And you can see the very end one down there is perfect for that. Now, just something you do need to understand, to get the highest resolution image here, you do need to have an account. It's a free account. 
So just sign up for a free account and you'll be able to download the really high resolution images. So I'll just download that. Now, if you notice here, while these are all free, all the, um, all the owners of these images would really appreciate a donation so um, and the attribution even though you don't have to give it so I would suggest you could do that occasionally give them some donation so I'm just going to download this image into Photoshop Elements which is my preferred um, editing software now here we are in Photoshop Elements and here's how I'm going to process this image the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and crop this down to the ratio of 1 to 2. So what I'm going to do is in Photoshop Elements over here on the left, I'm going to pick this Selection tool. And down the bottom down here, you see I've already got this set up for a ratio. It's right down the bottom, a fixed ratio of 2 to 1. So it's 2 wide, 1 high. And then I'm going to select an area and move that selected area to where I think I'm going to get a really good balanced image, which is about there. And I'm going to crop that to get rid of all the area that I don't need. Now the next thing I'm going to do is turn it into black and white. So I'll go up here to enhance and just say convert it to black and white. Now here's where I can ramp up the contrast. If you look at that image in the bottom behind there, you'll see it could do with some um, improvement in the contrast. And when I do that in um, Photoshop Elements here, and I'm converting to black and white, you see I've got the option down here, down the bottom, to ramp up the contrast. So I just drag that slider across, and you can see the image change in the background there. I don't want to lose too much detail of that frog. Maybe back a little bit somewhere around there. I'll accept that and there's my image. Now I could go ahead and use that image as it is, print out the decal and put it onto a plate. But I like to invert my images. In Photoshop Elements to do that I go up to Filter, pick Adjustments and Invert. And that gives me a really cool look at image. Now I like those images, I think they work really well. And that platter that I asked you to vote on, that's exactly how I did the images on that one. I just simply inverted them. So we'll go back to one of those other images. And let's pick this bird one. Now we'll download that. And you can see there's a high resolution image which does fit our resolution requirements. Download that and put it in the Photoshop Elements. And again, I will do the same. I will select an area of the correct ratio. I'll position that to what I think will make a great image. I will crop it. I will then convert it to black and white. Improve the contrast a little bit. To about there I think. I accept that. Now that image again I could put it straight onto a plate but again I could invert it. Let's have a look at how it looks inverted. Now that's pretty cool and that's what I would use if I was making a plate. Now I'll just show you what can be done in Canva. Um, you will need an account in Canva. There's a free account available and that's all you really need to do this. So once you've got your account um, up the top right corner here, there's a create a design option. So just click on that. Now you will have to set it up to a custom size. So right down the bottom down here, you'll see a custom size button. Click on that. Now I've done this before, so I don't have to put the size in. You see there's a width and height, you can see it down here, but I will just for this exercise. So it's 2820 by 1410. And now we'll end up with just a blank canvas. But we have our own image, so we don't need any of what Canva 
office here so we just go to uploads and you would normally just go and upload your own image let's just hit on upload um, go device go and navigate to wherever you've stored that image I'm not going to do that here because it does a little bit of work and processing it so I'll just cancel that and I do have that image here available which is the cat one or a cat one and we're going to use that one so I just click and drag that one over here it's not that size it's a bit smaller but that doesn't matter we can resize it and position it about there I think would make a nice plate now first thing we need to do is remove the color and you'll find on the filter option there's a grayscale image right down the bottom here give us a grayscale and now to ramp up the um, contrast there's an adjust option up the top and in here there's a contrast slider so we choose that and then bring that contrast across to where we think it will be good now Canva doesn't have an option to invert this um, and if it does it's well and truly hidden um, so you can't invert it here there may be other online editing software that can do this and the pro version of Canva may do this as well but I don't have a pro version cut so I'm not too sure anyway this is about where I would take it and then it's just a matter of download up to the top right corner you see there's a download option click on that and then you can uh, there's a couple of options there but you'll just take it as a PNG and download it don't worry about this transparent background or anything like that unless of course your image you need a transparent background but in this case we don't and then just hit download and then it will download it for you as you can see at the bottom and then we're waiting then you would save it to wherever you want to save it so well, that's about it with Canva but um, if you don't have any editing software look around for other online options there are plenty of them out there <coughs> The image I'm actually going to use in this plate is this one. I've composed it out of two separate images and I've set the size exactly to our piece and the ratio is correct. So from here what I need to do is print it out, try it on my fused piece, make sure it fits and uh, just keep doing that and adjusting it until it fits on the glass exactly where I want it. Then I would print the decal. Now the process to print this out will depend on the laser printer you're using but of mine here I'll just show you this quickly so from the file menu there's a print option I would make sure that I've selected my laser printer now you must print it on the laser printer test it I should say on the laser printer you're going to use make sure that the paper is set to the right size which in this case is letter and then I would start out by printing this in a custom size. I wouldn't use the actual size on this because it's never right. So I'd start out by printing it by, um, it is 24 centimeters long. So I'd go 24 centimeters there. And then I would print it. I'd cut it out as if I'm cutting the decal out, place it on my plate, make sure it fits. If it doesn't fit, I'd come back here I'd change the custom size, I'd increase it slightly or reduce it slightly um, until I get it to fit correctly. It's only then that I would print the de actual decal. So I'm going to do that with my image. I'll print out the decal and then we'll apply it to the glass. So I've printed out the decal, I've uh, got the size right, I've cut it, I've got my glass nice and clean and my tools and some water over here and now I'll just apply that decal. Like all water slide decals, um, just place the decal in the water until it stops curling over. And then I put a small amount of water on the actual glass. Decal has started to come off in the water. So 
I'm just going to get that out of the water. And apply it to the glass. This takes a little bit of mucking around. Usually not too much. Get it on my glass right. Take a little bit of that water out. A spatula. Squeeze that water out. Get all the bubbles out. This takes a little bit of time just to get it all nice and right. So I might fast forward this. Okay, I think I've got all the bubbles out. It's just a matter of let this dry now. Um, I'll let it dry overnight and then we'll put it in the kiln tomorrow. Well, I'm not too sure about this one anymore. It, the decal has dried and I am going to put it in the kiln. But I think that butterfly on the left hand side is just too dark. I suspect we're not going to get much detail on that. Anyway, I'll get it in the kiln and we'll find out tomorrow morning. I was just about to put this in the kiln and I thought, hang on, I haven't done any video. So this is it um, after the full fuse and it's come out nice, but uh, the butterfly is too dark in my opinion. You can still see there is a little bit of detail in there, but I think it's just, you know, try and get up closer. No, it doesn't come out too good on the video, I don't think, but you can see a bit of detail. I should have picked a different image. But anyway, it is what it is. I still think it's going to make a nice plate and I'll get it in the kiln now and we'll slump it. So I will be doing more videos uh, using these sepia decals. Not so much to go over the whole process of selecting the images and so forth, but just to show you how to colour these things. Now you can colour them in a number of ways. You can use um, enamel, which I think I've done in the past. You can use frit. You can use confetti. And you can use just pieces of glass, like uh, something like a 2 mil fired on the top. Um, and you can also use crayons that they use in ceramics all of those i've used and you can use actually colored decal paper under the um uh, the sepia decal but there's a little trick to that one but anyway that's something that you can look forward to in the future i'll be doing videos of all of those okay now we come to the section um, where i talk about some of your questions over the last week or so leanne asked about the six millimeter thick base that I used in that um, frit reaction one. It was Bullseye 90 COE glass, which you'll find is one of their products. Still to do with that frit reaction uh, bowl, Leanne asked about cutting the glass bigger than the mould. Now you can cut the glass a little bit bigger than the mould and it won't be a problem because as the um, glass slumps down into the mould, it'll pull those edges in a little bit. If you go too far past 
um, it may start wrapping around the edge of your mould, um, which is not necessarily a good thing. She also asked about the tape that I used to put over my marks when I was cutting the glass. That is just sticky tape. There's nothing special about it. Um, and it will last for quite a while. Eventually it will start coming away from the glass, but generally I can get through all of my cutting before I have a problem with it. Sharon asked about the sandblasting that I did when I was making the strip construction platter um, and uh, if it can be just left out. The problem with that one is, is that you usually end up with such a very rough uh, edge around the piece that it needs to be ground or cold worked in some way. And also you're fusing the top of it down onto the thin fire paper or whatever you're using. So it's going to pick up some texture from that when you turn it over. So given that you've coal worked the edges and you've got some texture to the top of that, generally I sandblast it and then fire polish it again just to uh, you know, clean up those edges and get that uh, a nice polish to the top of it. Um, but look, if you are careful about how you lay up all the strips so that the edges are not too bad, they don't need coal working, and you don't mind that bit of a texture, yes, you don't have to sandblast it you, and you don't have to fire polish it again. You can get away with that and uh, just continue on to the slump. She also asked about combining the fire polish and the slump. Yes, definitely you can do that and what you'll end up with is a nice satin finish. You'll see in that uh, video that I, made, that I made about making the moulds, um, that's exactly what I did there. I sandblasted it and then slumped it and they ended up with that satin finish. Shelley asked about uh, the strips I cut and what I was using to cut them, um, what sort of system it is. That's the beetle, beetle bits cutting system and that little thing that slid along the bar, they call that the flying beetle. So um, if you're looking for something like that, let's go looking for the beetle bit system and that's an accessory to it. And I think that's about it. If I've missed anything, please let me know and I'll try and cover it in the next video. Now, I hope you enjoyed that and it was worth sitting through quite a long video. And if you want to watch a couple more right now, don't forget, you'll find them up here and subscribe button there. And please turn on the notifications. So if you want to see more of these videos and until the next one, I'll say bye for now.